Alright guys, so we have a different format today, but this video is meaningful to me, and today we're talking about bowling, specifically my high school team. Now, everyone knows what bowling is. You try and throw one of these at some of these, right? Well, not exactly. Now when people think of sports, the first thing to come to mind is definitely not bowling. In fact, on this list of the top 25 world's most popular sports, it doesn't even show up. And this has snook. In fact, for most people, the words activity, pastime, or recreation are more accurate descriptors. However, for those of us that do participate in the sport that is bowling, it gets way more complicated. Here's a quick rundown. This is a bowling lane. It has 39 boards that are one inch in width. This is the approach where you walk up to bowl, and here's the foul line that you don't want to cross or else you'll get reprimanded in robot language. From the foul line to the head pin, or the first pin, is 60 feet, and the pins are arranged in an equilateral triangle about one foot apart from each other. There are three main types of bowling balls, urethane, plastic, and reactive, and they all do different things on the lanes, so you have to choose what type of ball to use. For most bowlers' first shot, a reactive bowling ball, like this haywire, is used. However, just because a bowling ball is reactive doesn't mean they all behave the same way. See, reactive bowling balls are dictated by their cover stock, or the grippy outside part of the bowling ball, and their weight block, the inner part that dictates tumbling physics. And, for example, this haywire would be classified as a solid, symmetrical, reactive bowling ball. So not all reactive bowling balls are the same. But bowling balls are just half the story. Now, let's talk about the other half, oil patterns. Quite literally, patterns of oil on the lane. Now, each lane has around 25 milliliters of oil put on it, and that helps with friction. Without it, your ball would do something like this, which is obviously not good. The key here is that oil patterns reduce friction, but of course, it's not that simple. If you were to go bowling on any ordinary day, you'd be bowling on a house shot. Notice how the oil in a house shot is concentrated towards the inside. This makes it easier so that if you throw it outside, there will be more friction and your ball will hook in and strike. Similarly, if you hold it on the inside, the ball will skid more and still will strike. This makes it easier to bowl on a house shot. On a sport shot pattern, however, it's not that easy. See, sport shots, for example, like this reverse block type pattern, put oil in different places, and in this case, it's on the outside, so that if you throw the ball outside, it skids and doesn't strike. Similarly, if you throw the ball on the inside, it grabs because of the friction, hooks to the left, and doesn't get a strike again. There are tons of sport shot patterns, and here's a few of the PBA sport shot patterns, but in general, sport shot patterns are more difficult. So, you got all that? Good. Let's move on. Going down memory lane a little bit. So kind of your journey. bowling history. Yes. This is a picture of you on your third birthday. This was your first time bowling. I think we went out to St. Charles Bowl. I'm not sure. That looks like fun way to me. Fun way? Mm -hmm. Maybe it was fun way. And you got a 45. That was your score. Wow. Now. I'm sure you used bumpers. 
I don't know. Knowing you, you probably got mad if other people were not using bumpers and you were using bumpers because you wanted to be like the other people. So maybe you bowled without bumpers. I don't know. Right here I have, you were nine years old and you got your first turkey. <laughs> now Connor was bowling too that day. He was seven years old and he got his first turkey. Nine years old again at St. Charles Bowl, you got your first 200 game. You got a 204. I remember that. Do you? Yes, that was my lesson with Mike. Oh, was that your first lesson with Mike? No, I don't, no, it wasn't my first, but it was one of them. It was on okay. lane 24. Oh my goodness. Ah, this is a good one. This is a good one. First 300 game, it was a 777 series. You were 16. I was 16. You're 16. And I have a note here that Connor shot a 279 in the same game. Mm -hmm. So we almost had, I almost had my boys do a double 300s mm -hmm. that day. That would have been something. And then I have stuff from Junior Gold. I remember that. Connor and I qualified the same day. You did. That was at an uh, EYT, an elite youth tournament. Mm -hmm. That's uh, junior goal, which is the, you have to qualify for it. You can't just show up and bowl. You have to qualify for it. It's a national tournament. Actually, it goes internationally because it brings in Puerto Rico and Canada, do they bring Canada in? It's actually an international tournament that you guys have been involved in. That's, oh, that's the team from last year. There's the team. Fourth place in state. Well, not all of them, but the varsity team took fourth place in state. We're gonna try and do that a little bit better this year. So yeah, I've been bowling for most of my life, but some of the best years have been high school bowling. Now 2016 to 2017 was my freshman year on the bowling team, and as far as varsity goes, we had Dean Mudlong, Kyle Middendorf, Andrew Culpertson, Wes Cordray, Aaron Cordray, Timmy Smith, and then myself and Nick Katrara. This was a good team. In fact, Dean Mudlong bowls collegiately at Lindenwood now. And we won trophies. It wasn't like we were an unsuccessful team. We just weren't good enough. Now, that being said, it wasn't like if we were on our on day, we would win state, because that would definitely be a possibility, but it just didn't happen for us, and we didn't get out of sectionals. Sophomore year, the team took a big blow, losing Dean, Kyle, Timmy, and Andrew, among other seniors. We did, however, gain a really good bowler, Edward Burgos. Remember him for later. But as far as our record goes, there was no big notable achievement that I can remember, and we didn't even make it to state. But oh boy, did these pieces come together junior year. Let's meet the players. First up is Edward Burgos. This two-handed lefty, originally born in Puerto Rico, came in sophomore year and never looked back. He had been a basketball player freshman year, but ended up dropping the basketball team for the bowling team. He throws fast, he revs mean, he's the two-handed striking machine. Next up on the list is Nick Catrara. Nick has been bowling for most of his life and has been with the team all four years. A machine with his spares, Nick has definitely been a valuable asset to the St. Charles East varsity bowling team. Next up is Ed Naraki. Ed joined the team my sophomore year and is definitely the team clown. He sits at the sixth man on the state team and has definitely proven a great asset to JV and a contributor to varsity tournament success. Next up is my brother, Connor Johnson. Connor came in my junior year and has been a valuable varsity bowler. His rotation has been called magic and he can really swing the lane. He even took second place individually at one of our tournaments. Thanks, Con, for all the help you've done. Next up is Edgar Burgos, Edward's cousin. He'd been living in Puerto Rico, but after the earthquakes, he moved up here. 
Already an established bowler, Edgar had won the Junior Gold Tournament in 2016, an annual youth international bowling tournament. So he had already made a name for himself, and Edgar definitely delivered, bowling two 300 games and winning state individually. Thanks for the help, man. Next up is, well, me. I've been here all four years, and I'm able to say that I have both placed and won in more than one tournament. I bowled on both JV and varsity, but I still earned my varsity letter freshman year, and I think I've been a help to the team overall. Next up is Nathan Greco. Nate joined as a freshman my junior year. He's one of the eight men on the state roster, and Nate has been a contributor to both varsity and JV. He will definitely be an asset in the future. Finally, we have Joshua Cole. Josh has been a member of the team all four years, and he's definitely improved over the years. This high school long contributor has landed his spot as the eighth man on the varsity state roster. How would you rate the skill of the team? The skill? Um, I think we have a really good chance of, well, our skill is really good. We have a lot of talent. They're definitely going to make it to state because they're one of the best high school bowling teams in, the, in our state. We all know how to play different parts of the lane. We can uh, adjust, we can do all this stuff. I think they are best in the state. So you think we're going to win? Yeah. I think we have a really good chance to state. Um, well, since we just won state. <laughs> nope. Best in, the, best in the state, I'd say. Probably like a 9.5 out of 10. All right, you think we're going to win state? Yes. When we go to nationals, we'll see how we match up to those uh, Ohio bowlers. Maybe even the Montana crew seems pretty good. Needless to say, we had some high expectations, but it wasn't like they were just going to hand us the trophy for state. We had to compete, and we had to start out with regionals. So defensive, and I'm like, okay, if we're going so defensive, then why would I Okay, I think this is the AirPods, so I had his kind of... Oh, really? Yeah, because he let me... It's gonna be a pretty easy dub. Easy. Your stamina was just like, in real life. But you like had to go to Keep in. Uh, yeah, Ed, do you want? Uh, yeah, check it. How are you feeling today about regionals? Feeling, feeling pretty good. Um, we're just here having fun. Uh, we should easily take it to up, you know, easy stuff, you know. But yeah, it's gonna be fun. Big day. Are there any teams you're worried about? Nah, not yet. Not yet. Next week, maybe. But we, we're still one of the best teams in the state, so we're good. All right. Are you guys gonna win? Maybe. I guess gonna catch okay, it Okay, listen, we went off on Monday. We averaged 11.10 per game. Just, how, how are you guys feeling about regionals? That's no, pretty it. Good. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Easy. Easy. Just yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just Nate, here. Nate's just here for us to make fun of him. Oh. <laughs> are there any teams that you are very scared about? No. They should be scared of us. I mean... <laughs>
I mean, there isn't really that much to say about it. We shot 6486, beating second by more than 100, Edgar won with a 1390, and we beat every other team in every other regional. We beat the state, but all that did for us was give us a plaque, bragging rights, and move us on to sectionals. So honestly, how are you guys feeling about sectionals? I'm pretty good. I don't yeah. know. Let's yeah. think we're gonna catch a dub today. I hope mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. But, no doubt. Uh, for sure, just need to make top six to move on to state. But uh, we're looking to win. Bigger, how are you feeling about sectionals? Yeah. You already know how I'm feeling. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> I'm excited, yo. Sectionals was cool because we had so many supporters, like Kyle from freshman year. It was an absolute pleasure. I can't wait to never do it again. Timmy from freshman year. And that dropped me. Can I help you? Kids from school. How was y'all's sectionals experience? It was amazing. It was good. good. Yeah. It was very good. Luke came out from the JV2 team, and even a freshman coach, TA, came out. So really, guys, thank you for all that support at sectionals. It was really cool for you to show up. In fourth place, shooting 63-37 was St. Charles East. At sectionals, we got fourth. Fourth place. I guess this just highlights a concept that the best teams don't always win. The teams that do the best win. Regardless, though, we were on our way to state as the dream team. But these tournaments were all in 2020. And we had the same Varsity 5 in 2019. So, what happened that 2019 year? Well, put simply, three things happened. First of all, the team won regionals. Second of all, when we got to state, we came in fourth. And third of all, Edgar Burgos won state with two 300s. But we didn't want to settle for fourth. We wanted to come back stronger the next year and take the victory. So, without further ado, I present to you the state story. Yes. Now the story starts to get interesting around sectionals. Now Sectionals was held in the same bowling alley as regionals, so there were more bowlers and more spectators in the same place, and it turned into an oven. And maybe because of this, Connor started to feel bad, he went by the fan, Nick got a headache, Edgar got nauseous, and I wasn't feeling perfect from previous times, so the overall physical feeling of the team was just not good. The worst, though, was yet to come. That regional was on a Saturday, and it didn't get much better health-wise the rest of the weekend. In fact, Monday night, I found out that I was running a fever. And the next day at the doctor's office, even my doctor looked at me funny. So my mom had to make the call and say, Coach, Tyler can't come, and Connor's a maybe. I was about to be unable to bowl my senior year at State. But that's not the end of it. On the team, out of the eight state bowlers, seven were sick. We had four confirmed flus, one sinus infection, and two coughs. The dream was basically gone. But something miraculous happened after that Tuesday night. I felt better. In fact, I felt so much better that I had hope that I would actually be able to make it to my senior year at state. In fact, that Thursday of the state send-off, I was able to go to school, and I was able to be there for the send-off. In fact, every other bowler, one way or another, was going to be able to make it. Most of us were taking Tamiflu, but one way or another, we were all going to be able to make it to state. 
That same Thursday, there was a two-hour pre-tournament practice at St. Clair Bowl. This was to, I guess, warm up and see the lanes, but Connor and I weren't feeling the greatest, so we didn't attend. We spent most of our time that night at the Drury Inn and Suites, and although we did go get pizza, we spent most of our time at the hotel. The first game we shot 11.25, which was really good, averaging 2.25 per bowler and putting us in second place. For game two, we shot 10.54, which wasn't as good, and dropped us down to sixth, but wasn't terrible. For game three, we shot a 10.72, putting us right up back to second. Overall, we were doing pretty good, and after this, we just went onto the bus for our Jimmy John's lunch. Game 4 though took a turn for the worse, putting us at a 10-12 and dropping us down to 5th. We still weren't out of it though. But Game 5 we shot even worse, shooting 10-11, but we still kept our 5th place overall. We finished out the day with a 10-29, putting us back up to 4th place. This wasn't exactly where we would like to be, but we weren't in bad spirits. For the rest of the day, we just chilled in the hotel. The next day was day two. This was the finals. The winner would be decided at the end of it. We were in fourth place, and we had to make up 300 pins. Here we go. For game one, we shot out of the park, and even better, we were bowling right against the first place team. We shot 1198, destroying them and moving us up to third. Game two of that day wasn't as good, but we still kept our third place, shooting a 1037. We had declined the first two games, and that trend didn't change for game three. We shot a miserable 941, dropping us down to 6th. Now I didn't get any footage of us on the bus for lunch, but believe me when I say, it was not a fun place. We had decreased every single game that day, and spirits were down, and we were overall just in a bad mood. However, there were some good things that came out of it. For example, Harlem, the first place team after day 1 and the 2019 state champs, were doing really bad for day 2 they fell apart. Also, the field was getting narrower. So even though we were in fourth place after day one, we were down 310. We were in sixth, only down 172 after game nine. Like Nick said, we made up half our pins in half our time. We had three more games and we had to push through. For game 4 of day 2, or just game 10 in total, we shot a 10.73 which shot us way up to 2nd place, so that was a good game. But then, well, then game 11 happened. But first, a little bit of context. So in bowling you add up 5 bowler scores for a total, and our scores range from about 1000 to 1200, with 1200 being super rare. So get your popcorn, because game 11 was awesome.
I'm gonna pause that shot right there and show you how everyone was doing. So this is the lineup, and here is what the games look like. As you can see, there are a ton of strikes on the board. This was definitely a good game. But let's look at two games in particular, mine and Edwards. We were on a perfect run, 11 strikes in a row, one strike to go. So let's go back and look at my last shot. Next, Ed was up. Let's look at those scores again. Nick shot 231, Connor 226, Edgar 224, myself perfect, and Edward 298. We shot a 1279, averaging almost 256. This game put us in first place ahead 161 pins. We had almost two perfect games and we set a new state record. This game was magic. It was amazing to see. And at this point, we were thinking that we could do this. All we needed was a decent game because we were up 161 pins. So that's what we set out to do. We shot 1,005 for that last game, averaging 201 per bowler, and we finished before other teams, so all the numbers weren't set until everyone finished. But as they got closer and closer, we felt more and more that we had done it. And turns out, we did. The next day we packed up for home and it was cool because family members decorated the bus and the cars behind the bus so we had our own little caravan of state champion decorated vehicles so thank you guys for doing that. The bus ride really wasn't that eventful. People slept and we made our way home. And when we got home we had a police escort and a little ceremony and when our bus dropped us off which was cool.
Congrats to uh, Tyler for bowling a 300 during state, fifth game. Just everyone on the team for shooting very well this second day, second half. I mean, that's what they needed, so congrats. And the next day, the school celebrated by throwing us an assembly. Thank you everyone that put that together, and thank you for cheering us on at that assembly. And next, we had our banquet. This was kind of a last hurrah for all the bowlers, where we could just bowl for fun, hang out, have some food, and have a good time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
family members were also allowed to bowl. So once again, thank you to those that helped out, thanks to those that decorated, and thanks to those that just did something to help this banquet go on. We of course got accolades throughout the school, so thank you guys for that. And we were also put into the press, so it was just an overall cool experience to be put in so many publications. I was able to talk to reporters, and it was just, like I said, a cool experience. Pieces come together for state champions, from St. Charles to state East. champion. St. Charles East wins first state Record championship. Seven game leads St. Charles East to IHSA Boys State Bowling Champion. Tyler Johnson gets well, leads St. Charles East to first state title. The stars title. align. Tyler Johnson bowls a 300 game as St. Charles East rallies for state title. Male most valuable athlete, Tyler Johnson. I think there's even another site that's going to publish the story, so the whole thing really is cool. That was quite a season. In fact, that was quite a four-year ride. I'm, I'm definitely going to miss it. It's been just a great experience to be part of this team for all four years of my high school career. And now I'm going off to college and they don't have a team. I'm just gonna be tournament circuit or league, but this high school team is a special bond and it was just a great thing to be a part of it. Nick and Edward, you are two of my best friends. Hopefully that friendship will last. Naraki, please never stop being funny. Connor, you're my bro, I love you. Nate. I noticed that you were so nice when you first came here. Don't ever not be nice. Josh, don't ever stop smiling, and good luck in your culinary adventures. And Edgar, thanks for the carry, kid. Chef, thank you for being there all four years, being a part of this team, and putting up with me. Mr. Burgos, thanks for joining, and thanks for coaching us and working with us. And to all of the, to, to Griffin, to Timmy, to everyone, thank you for being a part of this team. Even if you weren't part of the state team, even if you weren't part of the audience to the state team, just thank you guys for being part of the St. Charles East Bowling team. Um, I'm gonna miss it. Um, thank you all the parents for supporting us, for putting your money into your kids to get equipment. And to join the team in general, thank you guys for being there for us. Um, yeah, thank you to everyone that's been a part of this program. Everyone that I've bowled with, everyone that's worked with me, everyone that's made it happen. And even to the people on other teams, kids that I know, seniors, friends, anyone that's been a part of this bowling experience. Thank you for being there. <laughs> Good luck with what goes on in your life. And like I said before, it's been a really great four years. We are the dream team. We were, this year, 2020, we were the dream team. We won state, and don't let anyone take that away from you.
seriously, for the last four years, these guys have just been an amazing, you know, group of kids, amazing group of guys. Couldn't be, you know, more of a team, more supportive of each other.